Salutations, Solomonic fellow travelers. Here's a few questions for you. Have you ever burned your fingers on flaming beeswax candles during the consecration of the fire and cursed silently under your breath? Does your consciousness wobble with the water in your pre-dawn Solomonic bath with soft and visible fingers wrapped around your neurons, slowly trying to coax you back to the warm embrace of your bed? Sometimes, but only sometimes, do you spend hours planning a ritual the day before only to blissfully banish your alarm clock back to silence while whispering to yourself, I'll do it next week? Never, right? Uh huh. <laughs> We've all been there, hitting the snooze button more than the oratory, choosing to relegate magical inquiry and ritualistic engagement to a mere side hobby instead of a consistent, effective, and diligent art and science. Now, monks and people living in the Middle Ages and practicing magic at any time have their distractions for sure. I mean, most of the grimoires tell us that we need to find time and make time away from the world. But let's be frank here. In today's world of hashtags, and shortcuts and life hacks and videos of kittens riding Roombas, don't judge my internet search history, our attention is coveted after and it is sliced finer than a lion skin belt. So, given all of this, what kind of magically imbued snowshoe is strong enough to allow us to rise above, to trudge through the never-ending avalanche of distraction, to buttress ourselves in our occult lairs, both mental and physical, and to reclaim ourselves as active participants in our lives as magicians. That requires will, also known as determination, which is a magical force in and of itself. And to illustrate this, I'd like to invoke the hidden devilish drive of will in two of the most famous poems of all time and why you should always read or reread them when preparing for magical rituals. At least I do, and, and perhaps you could consider it as well. The two excerpts we will be examining are from two of the best poems in English, John Milton's Paradise Lost and Alfred Lord Tennyson's dramatic monologue Ulysses. Now, both of these poems, to me, touch on the vital Promethean or Luciferian will and how this attitude, this refusal to yield to either materiality or non-materiality is vital for the practicing ceremonial magician. Now, let me be clear. I am not a Luciferian. I am a Solomonic practitioner of ritual magic, period. And I find that there's a ton of benefit with engaging with celestial forces forces and angelic workings that is invaluable. But I think that this specific kind of will, the will to challenge the vicissitudes of fate, to conquer sloth, or the lust for results, or the fear of failure, or the fear of success, is the most important thing there is for success in magic, without which gathering the proper materia magica and memorizing invocations would be at best a half-ripe fruit falling with perfect mediocrity off of the tree of results. So let's begin with the character of Satan in Milton's Paradise Lost, an epic poem which follows the biblical story of the fall of man, how Satan falls from heaven in a failed rebellion against God, and how Satan then tempts Adam and Eve, which results in their expulsion from the Garden of Eden. Now, Milton said that the point of his poem was to, quote, justify the ways of God to men. But if you read the poem, you'll see that Milton treats the the character of Satan much more colorfully and, dare we say, empathetically than the cool, distant angels in heaven. And part of this treatment is Satan's will. Reading Milton's epic is, for me, a consciousness expanding and raising experience. I would definitely encourage listeners to read just a few hundred lines of Paradise Lost or to check out some of the excerpts online. But here, we are concerned with Satan's indomitable will, where even after being hurled in a blinding inferno from heaven down to earth, Satan gathers and rallies the defeated fallen angels and says that despite it all, despite being stripped of celestial office and glory, there is an unconquerable determination that burns inside him where he says amid total defeat, quote, what though the field be lost? All is not lost. The unconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal hate, and courage never to submit or yield. And what is else not to be overcome? One can almost 
feel the pillars of fate of what should be and what should be within the bounds or the rules just quake and tremble under the churning, challenging fury of Satan's meditations to his infernal, earthward shattered compatriots. And forget about the aim of Satan's will, of the drive to sin and to continue to rage against the Supreme Almighty. I mean, just looking at the will alone, we can tell that if we, as magicians, apply just a spark of that same drive to perfecting a magical circle, or writing stroke by stroke with consecrated ink and a goose feather quill, an entire grimoire in a Liber Spiritum, what else could we not do? Or as Satan says, what else could not be overcome? It is incredibly empowering and a great reminder. And practicing magic is active. It is not passive. We are not begging for a chance of a chance of celestial benediction to maybe shine on our pathetic, unworthy husks of flesh for a brief minute. Instead, magic is the direct engagement with spirits to change our fate, to change results in the real world on a variety of levels. It is this active participation that requires true determination. In fact, one of the challenges that must be overcome, as many magicians have shared on the Glitch Bottle podcast, is to stare disappointment and failure right in the eye, as Satan was staring his throneless, deprived, earthly kingdom in the eye and saying, no, all is not lost. This is the attitude that we need as magicians. Now, Milton Satan is charming, passionate, and defiant, embodying the, quote, courage never to submit or yield. Well, as Yale literary scholar and professor Harold Bloom has argued, Satan's refusal to submit or yield is absorbed and articulated in the dramatic monologue Ulysses, written by Alfred Lord Tennyson in 1833. The entire poem demands to be recited out loud, but I will restrain myself for now. And instead, here we will examine the concluding lines of Ulysses, where we find Ulysses, or Odysseus, having finished his famous Odyssey and coming back home to rule over his kingdom. He has everything, a family, riches, people who love him and worship him. But yet Ulysses, Odysseus, is filled with discontent and he yearns for something more. And like a magician staring a big magical project in the eye, or Milton Satan staring at the distant heavens from afar, Ulysses stares old age and contentment of just breathing in the eye and he says, no. He defies fate. He turns over his entire kingdom to his son. He gathers his aged crew to the shore and he says, quote, Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sitting well in order smite the sounding furrows. For my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be that we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Now, this is what we need to always keep in mind as magicians, whether we are staring down age or fear of failure or the daunting task of consecrating magical tools or finding a location for an operation, whatever it is, we look at it and we say we will desire always, quote, to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield. When we fail at an operation or don't perceive any results, we adjust, we record our results or lack thereof, and we echo Milton's paradise lost with the, quote, courage never to submit or yield. And like Satan, we ask, being filled with this determination, quote, what is else not to be overcome? 
Now that to me has made the difference and it makes the results, perhaps even as a test from the spirits, even more beneficial and sustaining. It is always, always the journey and being challenged and overcoming that challenge that most of the magicians that I know who have shared on the Glitch Bottle podcast and elsewhere have prevailed. They have sailed off their edge of the known world into the unknown baths of the stars, defiant, encanting the holy journey. And I hope that you know that you, ceaseless, have a ship and a crew waiting for you. And I hope that you continue to smite the furrows of your own fate and invoke often and forever and seek and strive and find and never yield. Mm -hmm.